Recorded live with little or no editing, it's defense up. I'm run seven, how you doing? Today, we need to talk about Iron Man and Vision, right? We don't have Deathlock, we don't have Viv, uh, we don't have Hulkbuster yet, but we do have Iron Man and Vision. Should we be building them for that tech team right now? What do we do in the meantime? Where do we place them? Are they valuable enough to put on your war defense? I mean, this is all gonna be dependent upon your roster and where you have them. But in my opinion, yes, we should start building these characters. I think the two of them alone will be valuable on your tech team and real soon we're going to be getting uh deathlock and before you know it the rest of the team will be here now iron man doesn't actually work all that well by himself he gets most of his perks when he has three uh bio avenger allies or bionic avenger allies so instead of trying to place him on this tech team with just vision you might start considering him as like an alternative to scarlet witch because he does prolong one uh all negative effects one time and that happens on his opening move and it's uh i believe it's unblockable but that might be that might be something with his uh with his team again but either way think of him like a scarlet witch at prolonging those negative effects and you can find some really good places to put him now fick Neary is in chat twitch right now and if you guys want to be a part of the fun you can always find me monday wednesday friday uh nine to noon central time today we got a bit of a crazy schedule but you can come hang out with us and watch these being recorded live uh nick fick Neary <laughs> sent in his defensive picks yes we opened up the list and we're going to take a look at what he did with vision and iron man on his roster so we got this queued up we grade on five different criteria to who you're using their placement their power levels their isos and what kind of mood i'm in team number one is the skill military team you went with the minion guy in there he gives them some good damage boosts i like um, honestly, I kind of like everything you're doing with this team as far as the ISOs are concerned and who you're using. I would just like to see a placement swap with Black Widow going next to Red Guardian because she goes invisible on turn one and then they can't chain off of Red Guardian to do uh, stuff like that. This is a good team to throw on defense these days. They're a little outdated. Everything that they beat is already old, and you're probably beating it with better teams that you've worked on. So it's a great place to put it. There's no need to bring them up any higher, although personally, I kind of feel we're entering this era where it's uh, if you're going to use the tune, you should take them to gear tier 14. I think we're coming up on that point when we're getting enough of that gold gear to get them, or orange gear if you prefer to get them to gear tier 14. So it's kind of like either leave them at the bottom of your roster or take them to 14. But you know, if you don't want to build these guys, it's fine. You built them from a previous era, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, I like all the ISOs. Let's just get a placement swap on that. I can give you an A minus for this one. Team number two is the wave one Avengers with Doc Ock in here. Now, of course, we've got Iron Man. This is not a bad spot to put Iron Man, but we could swap out Doc Ock or even better, swap out a uh, Hawkeye with Vision to get a little pairing of those two. They're gonna be feeding themselves some energy. They still do some energy even though they're outside of raids. Uh, they do way better in raids, of course. Um, I like that you've got Doc Ock in between your two tanks, giving them deflex and stuff. If you wanted to take this team up another notch, you could consider replacing Hawkeye with um, Maria Hill, so she's healing on those blocks. Um, and then uh, Iron Man is going to be prolonging negative effects, which is basically Hawkeye. Basically, Hawkeye is about the only um, person who's going to be throwing out negative effects. So there is some good pairing, some good options. This is a decent enough team. I kind of like where it's at. If you want to try uh, Doc Ock on a different team, you could throw him in there with the Secret Avengers. Um, uh, with with Kestrel, then you then you get the Maria Hill with the blocks and stuff like that. It's a it's a good move. I use that team with Captain America on it. Also, remember Hulk is somebody that we're going to be building for that Gamma team. Um, Hawkeye is really good on the Hex Factor if you're having trouble with Web Warriors. The only person here who really doesn't have a lot of value is Captain America, and he's still a pretty solid tank. So there's different options here. I like the ISO choices for all of these tunes. 
Um, you could go Raider on Hawkeye. I mean, there's things you could change about it, but this is fine. I think I can give you an A for this team. There, I don't have any problems with it whatsoever. All right, team number three is a villain tech team or more of just a tech team, really. You've got Vision spawning in with that defense up for most of the team. Then you've got Invisible Woman putting people under stealth and clearing some of those um, negative effects. Star-Lord giving some energy off to Ghost. Um, yeah, that's okay. Maybe Ghost will get some energy and open up big early on. I'm not sure if that really helps you. I think Star-Lord's just a tech character that you kind of threw in here. This kind of feels like a leftover trash team. It's not going to do much. It's not going to stop anybody. Um, also, you've got Vision as a skirmisher. With the rework, if you take Vision to blue 2.3, so 2.3 ISOs, he should have something like 40,000 focus, which is pretty darn good. It's way better than he used to be. He had a focus problem. So I don't know if we need him as a skirmisher anymore. Uh, I haven't been able to build mine up enough to test, so leave comments, let me know. Do you think that Vision still needs skirmisher for that focus boost, or is he doing okay with the, with the rework? Um, if not skirmisher, you wanna go raider on him. Okay, uh, we have three skirmishers, two strikers. That's pretty good math. Um, yeah, this is an okay leftover trash team. I think there's better stuff we can do with each of these in other places. But if you have a full roster or, or full lineup for your defense, this is okay. It's pretty meh. The ISOs are good. Um, you could change Star-Lord to a Raider. I mean, don't do it. He's kind of a worthless tune right now. He's a very, very poor legendary. I think he's now the worst legendary character we've got. Um... Yeah, so uh, I'm just gonna give this a B because it doesn't excite me and I think we can do better things with the pieces, but there's no problems here as far as that goes. All right, moving on to team number four is Shuri Killmonger Mercs. I love the Shuri Killmonger Mercs. Shuri and Killmonger are kind of a trap for this team. They're way more powerful than they used to be. It, it gets people to underestimate them. I like that you went Skirmisher Striker with your Mercs. You've still got Raider on Killmonger, but that's okay. He's doing so much damage after that Wakandan rework. I think he should be a Raider no matter what. Um, one thing you could do uh, with this team is if you wanted to place Mer replace Merc Lieutenant, uh, we've got some options of who you could replace him with. I like, uh, who is it that I like to do? Um, oh gosh, there was somebody I had, it was a hot pick. Well, I'll come back to it. Anyway, Shuri as a fortifier uh, is a great pick. We've been putting her as a fortifier for some of the raid content. Otherwise you run her as a healer, of course, but I kind of like her as a fortifier, just keeping her alive. She's a hot target. I like that you've got Riot Guard in between these two. That's a, a good choice there because they're hot targets. These mercs are really the weak link and we need to find replacements for them. And I like doing something like, oh, that's that was it. Replace him with Okoye. Because then when Killmonger attacks, you get an assist from Taskmaster and Okoye doing a ton of damage. And then if you wanted to, you could change him to a striker to get the triple tap. Again, I do like him as a raider. So there's some options for you. Uh, for other people, if they don't have Lieutenant built up that big, Okoye is a great choice. If you want to avoid building the entire Wakandan team, this is another thing you can do right here. I like everything that's happening here. I can give this team an A. Moving on to the Hero as Guardians. Um, there's a lot of people talking about putting Dormammu on this team in place of either Heimdall or Sif. Of course, in this instance, you would think you would want to replace Heimdall because Sif is so stacked. However, I think if you're going to replace Heimdall on this team with Dormammu, you should keep your Sif very small. That way, if they go into it with blind, and they kill Sif because she's so weak, uh, then Valkyrie is triggered, gives them all immunity, clears those negative debuffs, makes the team super tough, and then of course, um, uh, Dormammu is going to revive Sif, making it really vicious to get through. Otherwise, uh, you might consider replacing Sif. It's unfortunate that you put so much teal gear in there, I'm not sure why. I guess that was just to get into Dark Dimension 5 a little sooner or something like that. Uh, it's another skill character to be throwing in those tricky skill nodes in Doom 3, I guess. Um, otherwise, I do like to replace Sif with Dormammu. That's my favorite choice. Then you have their protection from Blind from Heindall, and there's not really many weaknesses. Um, 
and, and then your Asgardians are, are doing some crazy damage with that Dormammu. It's a, it's a great defense to be using, but you can run the five piece. This is really cool. I think you should probably leave it. There's other things you could do with your Dormammu. I like the gear tier 14 on almost everybody. I think you should go ahead and bring Heimdall up to 14. Uh, Raider on almost everybody. You went Striker on uh, Mighty Thor and Valkyrie, and that's okay. They have some basics that do warrant that. I personally like Raider on the entire team and just going after that massive crit damage because the entire team does get a big crit bonus. So there's some options here that you could do, some changes you could make if you want to. I think this is good. I can't really dock you for going with Striker. I just prefer Raider. So again, you get another A. This is looking like a really good lineup so far. Or maybe I'm just in a good mood. I don't know. All right, we have the uh, we have Cloak and Dagger with Drax, Minerva, and Scarlet Witch. This is a fantastic way to use your lesser characters that aren't built up so much like Drax. So Drax is going to be targeted right off the bat, and he's probably going to die relative his his power level relative to the rest of the team makes him very very weak. However, Minerva will then just immediately revive him and refresh that taunt, making him another target that they got to go through. So they're going to have to hit him at least twice with whoever they bring in. You've got Scarlet Witch in there, and she is prolonging the negative effects of Cloak and Dagger. Again, this is a spot where you could put Tony Stark in here to prolong negative effects in place of Scarlet Witch if you wanted to put her on your Darkhold team. So uh, options all around right now. Um, and this is one thing that a lot of people complain about Scopely and the way that they're releasing characters and building this game out. I really like it. I think they're giving us a lot of options to build wide and theory craft, and they're forcing us to uh, be very, very picky with how we spend our resources. I think it's a cool challenge. I don't have any problems with it at all. So, uh, Skirmisher here for the focus boost. That's cool. You could go ahead and take her into the blue. Striker Skirmisher combo on these two. I like that. Fortifier on her, yes. Fortifier on him, yes. Great placement. Everything working well. I want to give you an A plus for this team, except that I really do want to see Scarlet Witch brought into the blue. She's definitely worth it. And of course, we're going to have to build her for that Saga content with MLF. Um, uh, getting pretty tough in the... I'm in gear tier 15 on that last note. I can't seem to get three stars on it. It's kind of tough stuff. So I like this team. Would give you the A plus if she was uh, beefed up a little bit more. For now, you get an A. Team number seven is the Young Avengers. Good placement, good ISOs. It's the team we all know, love, and sometimes hate. I would like to see gear tier 14 on all of these characters. That's up to you and where you're at with your resources, but I think it's a very powerful team. We all underestimated this team when they came out. They're really good, and I think you should go ahead and build them up. They are valuable for a lot of different content. Um, so A for this team. Um, you know what? I got to give you an A minus. There's no reason you can't bring up some of this blue ISO stuff. That should have been done a long time ago, especially on Squirrel Girl or Kate Bishop and stuff. I mean, Kate Bishop, come on, man. She's crazy good. All right, here we go. Team number eight is the Emma Rodders with Madeline Pryor. Now, of course, Madeline Pryor, low stars, low red stars, uh, makes this team really weak. I wouldn't touch this team until Madeline Pryor becomes farmable and you get her beefed up. I find that this team is very easy to beat with a lot of different teams so long as Madeline Pryor is not very big. Uh, once you get Madeline Pryor really big, you want to make sure that your Strife can hang there. By the way, Fortifier doesn't do anything for Strife after his rework. He does everything that that Fortifier does for him. I think there's a fringe case that doesn't really matter, but I think we should be going healer on him Honestly, he doesn't have a lot of synergy with any of the ISOs, so you could do Raider and wait for that turn two to get out some vulnerables or something like that. Uh, we've got Skirmisher and Skirmisher. That's good. Striker on Madeline Pryor and Healer on... Uh, Mr. Sinister. I almost called him Captain Sinister. It's good. Uh, I think you over-invested in Sinister with uh, with your Madeline Pryor being so small. I mean, he is going to summon somebody really big or clone somebody really big and everything. That's good. But um, I think you should have waited and saved those resources until Madeline Pryor was built up and then start investing in this team. This team is great at a million plus. Under a million. And I just don't, uh, I just don't value them very high. So um, a little bit of a waste here although long term it's not because you will eventually want to build him up so it's okay i'm gonna go a minus for this team i'm just not very excited about it i wish we could have had a bigger madeline Pryor right there 
Team number nine is the Heroes for Hire. Good old H for H. You chose to go with the Raider on Iron Fist, and that's okay because sometimes he comes in with that big punch, and when he lands it and crits, it's huge. Something to consider is building up your Luke Cage to make sure he's much bigger than Iron Fist, so when the Dark Hunters come in and blind everybody except for one person, that one person that isn't blind is Iron Fist, and then he can connect with that and crit, and then call in the assist, and it can really kind of wreck some havoc. Uh, I see that you haven't really built up Iron Fist as much as you have Luke Cage, especially with the ions there. So that's something you could do is maybe give one more gear tier to Luke Cage to make this uh, team pop off. I don't know. Have your alliance mates practice against it and see who gets the blinds with that dark hold counter. Morbius blinds all five H for H now. When the f did that happen? As for your placement, this is good enough. Some people would argue that maybe you want to get like a, a little bit different here, but honestly, as long as Luke Cage is out of the corner, I don't care. There's so many different preferences with placement on all these different teams anymore. So, uh, Skirmisher, Striker, Fortifier, Raider, Raider, I like everything you're doing here. I think it looks good. I can give you an A for that team. And moving on to team number 10, which is the Brotherhood with Doom, and you threw in Deathpool here. So, um, again, I think this is a really well-built team. You've got three people putting out vulnerables and you have two strikers soaking them up. Deathpool is a really good choice in here because you have those doom bots that'll be coming in. Um, so long as they don't bring in somebody like Kestrel, I guess. And she'll be getting some extra damage in there. You've got Blob in there as a skirmisher. He'll be retaliating like 50% of the time. And so he'll be putting out even more vulnerables. Um, again, with a lot of people like to put him as a striker, but it usually doesn't play out well because they have to have disrupt and the vulnerable for him to double tap and do the whole slow turn me to rewind thing like that. So... I, I like him as a skirmisher. Y yeah, it's just a really well-built team. Again, with Toad, uh, I'd like to see him gear tier 14. Same thing with Blob. These are useful characters. They're not necessary by any means, but if you have the resources for these mutants, I think you should uh, think about it. We're not going to be getting a mutant team for uh, a couple of patches, I don't believe. So I think it's a good time for you to try and touch this up a little bit. It's not necessary. It's a good enough team. You're almost a million, although Doom is kind of carrying it but I think you're doing great. There is a case to be made to swapping like Toad and, and Doom so that Doom is not getting those deflex and takes more damage and gets his uh, turn meter speed up a little sooner. But honestly, I would rather have the deflex uh, protecting him from things like ability block or something. You know, if he blocks that, it's that 20% chance that it just doesn't land. So I think the deflex are the good choice. So everything here is good. You could power up uh, Toad a little bit, although, you know, he usually isn't a prime target on this team, so he can last pretty long i'm gonna go a minus for this team overall this was a really good roster i think there was a lot of thought put in here there are some teams like in the beginning i think this is kind of some leftover stuff and uh, this is kind of a leftover team but that's what we do in war you don't build for war defense you build for raids you build for arena you build for scourges and all the other content that you want to conquer and then you take what's left over and you build your defense with that maybe touching it up here and there to get a little bit more value out of your tunes um so uh Fick Neary, good job on your defense remember if you guys want to have your defense featured links in the description find me on discord you just dm me your picks and i put you on the list uh remember guys don't just have a good game be good to yourselves under this too and i will catch you next time bye